Hi, everybody. Uh, Erica here with my third and final tip about setting goals for manufacturing leaders. When you're setting your team up for success, you do want to make sure that you're defining it using that SMART acronym. You want to make sure you remove any obstacles, logistical or sometimes mindset goals as well. Uh, Create the space for them to step up and do the work. My third and final tip is make it their success. And what do I mean by that? People when they're motivated internally, will get all kinds of things done. I don't know why, but we as human beings have uh, reserves of motivation and skill that we will tap into when we really care about solving a problem, we're going to be so much better at it. So you get your heart into it, you get your stubbornness into it, um, you are going to persevere and your brain will work better in terms of putting... um, you know, putting your thinking cap on and and figuring out doing a root cause analysis and figuring out what's going on with a certain problem. So how do I know this? Because it happened to me when I was a young manufacturing engineer working on my Six Sigma black belt. And we had this problem with press force rejects on the bearing press on the Ford line. I still remember it. We were getting high press force rejects and low press force rejects, could not figure out what was going on. And we tried other things to test the easy theories. And we really needed to roll up our sleeves and and run the data and f- do lots of experiments to isolate different variables to figure out which one it was. Anyway, long story short, we did figure out which variable it was. And as we were going through, I wasn't really sure it was going to work. People were asking me as the lead of the Six Sigma team, hey, is this going to work, Erica? I- I have no idea, but we have to try. We worked the process, we applied the tools, we did what we needed to do. And if we were just doing it for the cookie, if we were just doing it for the check mark, we would have quit a long time ago because there would have been easier ways. This was a really tough problem and we had to persevere through it. But what happened for me, and I think other members of the team too, was we just got really stubborn about wanting to fix it. We wanted to get it done because this was like our own little detective show. (laughs) And we were the the stars of it. We were making things happen. In other words, we really took ownership. And this is what you want to do as manufacturing leaders is give your people the opportunity to make it their success. Don't make it something they're doing for you to follow your orders or, or be obedient. You want to make sure this is something that they feel internally is something they're committed to for their own reasons. So it's sometimes a little bit harder to dial in. You you might have heard the acronym, what's in it for them, W-I-I-F-M. Uh, that, there are many ways to create that buy-in. And once you do, it can be really magical. So I still remember that moment when we figured out what it was. It was surface finish for anyone who, who is wondering um, on my Six Sigma Black Belt project. And we were able to isolate that variable. We ran the follow-up test. We confirmed that, yep, that was the problem. And we were high-fiving each other. We were so excited. I, I can still picture it. It was Cam from production and Deepak from quality and Kevin from maintenance. And um, it, it was it, it was great. So that energy that I still feel to this day, I can still remember, is the inspiration for a process that I use with clients to this day. It's called Sparkplug, and I designed it especially for manufacturing environments. And it's all about giving your frontline people that sense of accomplishment and that real internal drive toward finding problems that matter to you as a manufacturing leader and and running with them on their own and having them come back to you with that sense of pride uh, to show you what they did instead of you having to chase them or make them do things. Uh, That is the shift that we're talking about. And it works and it's amazing to be part of from all sides. So I'm curious, has this ever happened to you? Have you successfully recreated this type of ownership and this type of excitement in one of your improvement teams? Um, If not, what do you think was missing? And if you have, would love to know all about it. And we can recreate the high five in the comments. (laughs) Thanks.